Hello. That's a different bedtime story today. I'm going to read you the listener from a book. I find this totally fascinating, beyond fascinating, for two different things. One, because the story in itself is astonishing. But two, because despite being true, and by true I mean, I mean there is proof of it, it happened, the establishment still claims that there is no scientific evidence for this. In 1982, Melon Thomas Benedict, at the time 33 years old, from North Carolina, had a near-death experience, MDE. He had a terminal illness, brain cancer. He was basically dead for an hour and a half. During this time, he had a profound spiritual experience in which he left his body and journal through a tunnel of light. He also said to have been given a life review in which he was able to see the interconnectedness of all things and the impact of his actions on others. After his experience, Benedict says that he was able to return to his body and he came back to life with a complete remission of his disease. Dr. Kenneth Rehm, a professor at the University of Connecticut, a leading figure in the field of near-death experience researchers, said that Melon Thomas is one of the most impressive stories he's ever heard of. Now, so you can go to sleep and potentially have a lucid dream or shift to your energetic body and have an amazing metaphysic experience. Who knows? I'll read to you how he described what happened. Somehow I found myself back in my room hovering over my body. I just stared and watched my body dying. All of life was leaving it rapidly now and I felt I was being pulled away from it in the vapors. I was being drawn into a dense darkness. It was a deep forest of tangled shadows and they were grabbing and trying to hold me. These dark shadows felt very sticky and somehow abrasive. The feeling was like one of my arms was holding on to the other and wouldn't let go. The more I tried to pull away, the tighter the shadows held me. It was a strange, sticky feeling. I know now that it was all of my life issues feeding back on me. All of my demons, fear, abandonment, betrayal came out of the darkness from all sides and all stuck to me, trying to consume me like cold, black, sticky fire. It felt terrible. Although I didn't consider myself a believer, I now cry deeply within my soul. God, please help me. About this time, scenes from my life began to appear all around me, like little cameo movies. Each story of event fully played out. As these scenes played, I was put back in touch with so many things about my life that I had forgotten, or repressed for one reason or another. Things I didn't want to remember, or was too young to comprehend. I was shown how much my mother wanted me and how she prayed for a child to come into her life before she became pregnant with it. I was amazed to see that she was praying for me. While in her womb, I saw that because my body was made out of her body. I was a part of her love, fears and life issues. My mother divorced my biological father before I started school. And I saw things about him I had never seen before, things my mother never told me. She didn't speak poorly of him, as many divorced mothers do to their children, but I saw things that made my skin crawl. The many times my father beat my mother while she was carrying me. When he punched her, especially in the belly, I sensed it as a fetus inside her. It sounded and felt like thunder. I don't know how others handled it, but I became very angry with my father. In those fights, I was programmed to mistrust men, that the world was a dangerous place and that love was painful. I didn't realize it at the time, but my worldview was killing me. I was a casualty of the Cold War, a casualty of fear. 
I bought into the doom and gloom messages reported by the media as I was growing up. Then I saw a satellite picture published by an ecology group which likened the city of Los Angeles to cancer cells. After that, I began to see all human beings as cancer, pervading the planet, and I lost all hope for humanity. I believed humans were a cancer, and I manifested what I believed. I was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. I saw that everything we do and think affects so many around us, like ripples on a pond, reaching and touching others far more than we might imagine. Years of my life played away as my body lay there, dying. At some point, I cried out, Enough! Enough! Where am I? Everything stopped, and the shadow began to close in tighter. I felt all alone and very cold. I saw that the vapor waves were no longer coming from my body. This made me feel sad and afraid. I realized that I must be dying or already dead. Then I saw a tiny light far off in the distance. I didn't know why, but I wanted to go there. It felt very alluring, like the arms of your ideal mother or father. I tried to reach the light, but not to avail. I couldn't move. More than anything I had ever wanted in my life, I wanted to go to that light, but it was still so far away, and the cold, fiery shadows were engulfing me in waves. Now, completely consumed by the shadows, I fell into what I can only describe as hell, <laughs> and what a fall it was. It was as if I was sinking into a suffocating black hole. It was my personal hell. But there were millions of others all around me in their own hells, suffering and grieving. My pain and fear was amplified millions of times. I cannot and do not want to describe this any farther than to say it was each individual's version of eternal misery. I also saw that every other hell around me had a speck of light, but no one was paying attention to it. We were all so consumed in our own fear, grief, loss, hopelessness, anger, and on and on. Feeling cut off by my own pain was the darkest part of this hell for me. And yet, all around me were millions of others, each caught up in their own private hell. In the midst of all my suffering, I remember that the light became brighter when I called to it. I cried out with all my soul, please help me, please help me. The more I summoned my will to focus on the light, the brighter and more intense it became. It occurred to me that if there was any way out of this place, it was at the light. I focused all of my energy and called out to the light with every atom of my being, all without words, just emotion and energy. Suddenly everything stopped. The intensity of the light continued to grow until I felt spears of light shooting through me, piercing my heart, hands and feet, then my head and eyes, giving me strength. Then out of the light, a golden beam shaped like a halo came towards me. As it moved closer, I could see that it was a towering golden angel. I'd always believed angels to exist only in fairy tales. But there before me was a most beautiful angel. I felt so much love emulating from his being. I didn't know what to do, so I asked, are you the angel of death? There is no death. There is only eternal life, the angel answered. Who are you then? Can you save me, please? I begged. I am your guardian angel, your higher self, your older soul, answered the angel. I have been with you all of your life. Upon hearing these words, I became aware of another part of myself, a larger, higher part that I had only glimpsed as a child and in rare dreams throughout my life. I had not understood that this was the larger part of me, the oversoul or the source of inspiration, my connection to the light. I cried, where am I? Am I in hell? Can you save me from the suffering or must I stay here forever? What did I do to deserve this hell? 
when I was enveloped in the angel's shimmering golden skirt. From inside it, it seemed to be transparent. Look again at your life, the angel said. I began to slowly spiral inside the angel's skirt, seeing again my life's demons, the shadows, the cold sticky fire growing at the skirt all around me. This time, however, I was protected in the skirt of the angel and could see the shadows without fear. The angel explained to me that I was trapped in my negative life issues, that they had consumed me, not just here, but all during my life as well. Then I realized that hell is a state of consciousness, very real and existing in both life and in what we call death. The consciousness survives death and the individual takes their issues, positive and negative, with them to the other side. So below, so above, and so above, so below, the angel said. And then, no soul was ever created to suffer. So why then have I suffered? I asked. Ignorance and fear, fear of survival, the angel answered. Look, I was shown more aspects of my life in exquisite detail. I realized how ignorant I had been because I did not know how the pieces of life create a tapestry that can be woven and woven and rewoven by everything that we do. How everything thread has a reason and a purpose. I've come into this world full of fear and anger and anger. I saw my biological father's life and experienced his rage, allowing me to understand why he was the way he was. I could see my mother's fear of survival in her adopted mother's hands and later in my father's hands. This was her program or life pattern. I could see and feel how fear and ignorance dominate so many lives. For the first time, I could begin to see why I was the person I have become. Can I leave this place? I don't want to be here anymore, I asked. Suddenly, everything stopped. And there arose a profound silence, except for an ever so slight hiss around me. I waited. It seemed forever for an answer. This is your life, the angel whispered into my right ear. What do you really want? I want to live here, please, I replied. Then let go of your negative life issues. What do you mean? How do I do it? I'll do anything, I said. Listen to me now. You have the power. You have always had the power to be free awaiting inside you. But how, I asked. Forgive all your life issues. Forgive everyone and everything in your life. Fear is the only hell, said the angel. Love your life everyone and everything and fear no more. At that very moment, I came face to face with my life. I'm trusting in life as never before. I said and meant, I love my life, all of it. I surrendered and what an incredible release that was. Loving my life freed me from hell. The time has come for you, you can leave. You are always good, the angel said. Now reach to me and come. I reached out emotionally for the angel. I could see millions of souls still trapped in their private hells. Most of them were totally consumed by the traumas they had suffered or created in their lives. I asked why these souls were unable to be free. They are already free, answered the angel. They hold themselves to negative patterns, memories, prejudices and fear. None of these negative qualities exist where you desire to be. I was protected by the angel and we moved at light speed through this realm of hell consciousness. I shouted to the others, call to the light, call to the light. You can leave this place anytime. I kept telling, call to the light, call to the light. You can leave, you can leave. I 
And you know, many did go to the light. Many souls did leave hell together. So I sailed with the angel out of hell and through several other realms, like varying degrees of light and dark, finally leaving the darkness behind. The angel changed back into a golden halo, which transformed into a beautiful tunnel of multicolored rings of light. I have never seen such colors before. As I flew faster and faster into the tunnel of light, I noticed a second light coming up. It was that a tiny light I saw in the shadows of hell. And now, as this light was getting larger and larger, I wanted to move even faster and faster towards it. And although I was feeling wonderful, it occurred to me, what is going to happen to me in that light? And so I asked, please wait a minute, wait a minute. And to my surprise, I stopped, just stopped. Everything just stopped. All at once, I heard a resounding yes, as if to say, yes, what is your desire? I want to think about all this for a minute, I said. All right, was the simple response. I paused for what seemed like a split second. What is going on here, I thought. And as soon as I thought the question, it was answered. This is your life and rebirth. And you are totally interactive, said the angel. I understood in an instant what that meant. Life is an interactive experience. And what we call death is just as interactive as life. It's not just a, pa a passive experience. This was an awesome realization. Imagine that John Lennon was right. What now? I asked. What you desire most was the reply. Take me to God, I wished without hesitation. Instantly, I was before an awesome light that was brighter than a million suns. It was like an all-encompassing, vast sea of endless love light. It was the light at the end of the tunnel, and it penetrated to the essence of my soul. I felt illuminated, fully conscious, totally present in every moment of everything. I was lit up with love light. In absolute awe, I asked the light, Are you God? 